Hi, my name is Stephanie, and today we're talking about Autism Speaks. I've never met any autistic person who supports Autism Speaks or thinks that they are a good organization. I am autism. I'm visible in your children, but if I can help it, I am invisible to you until it's too late. for about 15 minutes and actually contemplated putting Jody in the car and driving off the George Washington Bridge. If the diagnosis is becoming better, great. Does it matter? They're still autistic. All right, so I heard a lot about Autism Speaks and didn't know really for myself why everyone was so upset. I'd heard little tidbits here and there, but I wanted to look into it for myself and formulate my own opinions. So I've done a lot of research on this and I'm here today to share my findings with you and help share what I've learned about Autism Speaks. Today's video is going to be part one of a mini series on this where we're going to go through the timeline of Autism Speaks, why and how it was created, founders, and starting to get into kind of their history and some of the things that have uh, either marked, defined, or upset people <laughs> about this particular organization. This research project has definitely sparked my interest in a lot of other things and maybe some areas of Autism Speaks or little things that I came across that I want to look into more in depth. So later on, after this little mini parts series of Autism Speaks, I will be going more in depth in separate videos throughout my channel's lifetime. However, I did think that would be a bit too much for this one video, albeit this video is split into parts. I hope that you will stick around with me and find out the truth about Autism Speaks. Let's start at the beginning. A boy named Christian was born. He was his family's world. His mother, Katie Wright, was a happy mom. Her parents, Bob and Suzanne Wright, were doting grandparents. As he got older, he was walking, talking, and was described as precocious. But then they noticed some changes, and he seemed to withdraw, lose speech, hand flap, and go in circles. Now, as you might have guessed, Christian is autistic. Without as much information readily available, his loving grandparents wanted to do the best for him. See, Bob Wright was the head of NBC, and their family was well off with some serious connections. So, they go expecting to get the best-in-class care to cure their grandchild of the autism. And then they hear that there is no such thing. There is no real help or information readily available. The thing is, this was an absolute tragedy to them because they felt as though they had lost Christian, as if he had been kidnapped by this awful thing called autism. And I remember Katie saying, I'm losing him, I'm losing him, I'm losing Christian. So, in reaction to reality, where despite power, money, and influence, the family had to be waitlisted for therapies and had little information, they started Autism Speaks in 2005. Their mission statement read, We are dedicated to funding global biomedical research into the causes, prevention, treatments, and a possible cure for autism. We strive to raise public awareness about autism and its effects on individuals, families, and society and we work to bring hope to all those who deal with the hardships of this disorder. From the beginning, Autism Speaks had a very negative view of autism, and it was coming from the point of view of the family, not the actual child with autism. They got Bernie Marcus, co-founder of Home Depot, on board, who donated $25 million to their efforts. With money and influence on their side, Bob and Suzanne began to tell the world about the horrors of autism. This included a 10-year public service announcement campaign. Their campaigns definitely brought awareness to their organization, which is now the most easily recognizable organization to do with autism in the United States and even in other countries. Suzanne helped create the blue autism puzzle piece symbol, which you can see her and her husband wearing nearly any time they are in front of a camera. Apparently, this particular symbol was supposed to reflect how adrift and disconnected autism patients and their families could feel, according to a 2016 article by the New York Times. And yes, that says patience. They managed to get a World Autism Day approved, which to their credit is difficult and isn't organization specific. However, the tactics they will go on to use to get the government's and the public's attention on autism will prove to be concerning for those who actually are on the spectrum. 
Now, many might have thought that this was a well-meaning group of rich people making real changes for autism. And as well-meaning as they were for their grandchild, Bob and Suzanne Wright began the journey of spreading the message of their organization and of how awful and horrible autism is to the world. Their beloved facts they often perpetuated included equating autism with actual diseases. As one of their favorites to use was more children will be diagnosed with autism this year than with AIDS, diabetes, and cancer combined. They also tended to stress how much autism costs the nation. In 2005, their facts page said that, quote, autism costs the nation over $90 billion per year, a figure expected to double in the next decade. P.S. Fast forward to 2011, that was changed to say, quote, autism costs the nation over $35 billion per year, a figure expected to significantly increase in the next decade. Nice. In the next year of their organization's existence, Autism Speaks releases Autism Every Day in 2006. This video serves to highlight how awful the lives of the families are that have to deal with autism. This video is particularly well known for the following clip. The person speaking is one of Autism Speaks directors, Allison Tepper Singer. When I realized I had sat in the car for about 15 minutes and actually contemplated putting Jody in the car and driving off the George Washington Bridge. In front of her autistic daughter, she admits thinking of driving them both off of a bridge. She mentions in another version that she only didn't do it because of her other daughter who, by the way, happens to be neurotypical. Two years later, Allison did come to her own defense by trying to clarify that her younger brother had been institutionalized and it was a traumatic thing for him. And she thought it was better for her to take such a tragic action if that kind of thing were the only thing available to her daughter as she claims it was suggested to her. Only days after the video was released, autistic three-year-old Katie McCarran was murdered by her mother to, according to the mother, end both of their suffering. Many believe that she had seen autism every day and was emboldened in her actions. While it is important to note that it is not proven that this video was the catalyst for such a tragedy, it should be noted that these kinds of messages have the potential to influence people and negatively so. In addition, Harry Slatkin, board member of Autism Speaks, described in a documentary called Autism True Lives, a pond in their backyard that he secretly hoped his autistic son would fall in and drown. Later, he explains that he's come to peace with his son's autism, but they still actively chose to leave that part and statement in. While sharing about struggles can be helpful, the overall sentiment from Autism Speaks in 2006 is that autism is something that may not be worth living with. Moving to 2007, more complaints surface about Autism Speaks, namely their budget. Even in such a short amount of time, they've become a huge organization with donations pouring in from around the country. Expenses from their Form 990 gives a ton of money towards things that people find questionable, including three members of the board receiving $2.5 million for their own organizations, the company president Mark Reuthmayer receiving a five-year contract for about $2 million including bonuses without any background in autism, and even a note for an expense of a private jet plane for $57,000 for someone that entertained at one of the events. People call this out because it seemed abnormal for the age of the nonprofit, but this was started by the head of NBC and his connections. Despite some questionable expense allotment, Autism Speaks goes on to spread its lovely message of doom and gloom about autism. Autism Speaks YouTube channel shares a talk about autism and co-founder Suzanne Wright starts with how terrible autism is and how it's taken their children into the darkness. It's, um, it's my vacation and I couldn't imagine being happier than we had that walk with a huge turnout. I mean, it was just amazing. And any of you that walked, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It was, it was really so tearful just watching everybody be on the right, on the walk for all the right reasons. Because everybody knows how terrible this autism epidemic is and how it's taking our children into the darkness. I mean, here in your school system, I think Nina, you've identified 15 uh, with autism, and those 15 children have at least in their orbit another 20 people that are affected by autism. I know how it's affected my entire family. It's really quite devastating to get them all the right treatments and uh, practices that they need. During this year, the organization Cure Autism Now merges with Autism Speaks. 
and this year will bring more change with a public disagreement between Bob and Suzanne Wright and their daughter Katie over vaccines and autism. Katie believes that vaccines caused her son Christian to get autism. Her parents make it clear that she doesn't speak on behalf of Autism Speaks, though they have put funding into vaccines as a possible cause or activation. They did seem more convinced of the research already being done, showing cause through DNA. Katie Wright later goes on to become a board member of Safe Minds, which is looking into quote-unquote environmental factors for autism basically finding autism to be an illness that is possibly caused by vaccines. In fact, in the bio for Katie on their page, they say that she resigned from a position as director for SACC when, quote, her son Christian became ill. Moving on to 2008, Autism Speaks shares a parent video promoting Ian on their YouTube channel, which is basically parents sharing info about their autistic children to find a cure. Yes. They use the word cure and act like their children are just trapped inside their bodies. You could just tell by his eyes. He so desperately wants to communicate with you. You really wonder when you see him sitting in a chair by themselves, are they happy, are they sad? It's hard to figure out what's going on up there. Does she know how much we love her? I don't expect a cure overnight, but moving along at all is, you know, moving in the right direction. Sharing more insight into the thoughts of the co-founders on autism, in an interview, co-founder Suzanne Wright states that they want to eradicate autism for the future generations and hopefully within her lifetime. Welcome to 2009, where you would hope that maybe just maybe, Autism Speaks would have started to consider the actual voices of autism and not just think about how terrible it is for a person to be a parent of an autistic child. You would be wrong though. Autism Speaks goes on to release a video called I Am Autism, with a seriously creepy voice meant to personify autism much like a stalker. To make things worse, they received its video clips from parents by releasing a prior press release claiming that they were going to shine a great spotlight on autism. Where you live. And guess what? I live there too. I hover around all of you. I know no color barrier, no religion, no morality, no currency. I speak your language fluently. And with every voice I take away, I acquire yet another language. I work very quickly. I work faster than pediatric AIDS, cancer, and diabetes combined. And if you are happily married, I will make sure that your marriage fails. Your money will fall into my hands, and I will bankrupt you for my own self-gain. I don't sleep, so I make sure you don't either. I will make it virtually impossible for your family to easily attend a temple, a birthday party, a public park, Without a struggle, without embarrassment, without pain, you have no cure for me. Your scientists don't have the resources, and I relish their desperation. Your neighbors are happier to pretend that I don't exist, of course, until it's their child. I am autism. I have no interest in right or wrong. I derive great pleasure out of your loneliness. I will fight to take away your hope. I will plot to rob you of your children and your dreams. I will make sure that every day you wake up, you will cry. Through their Autism Cares project, they used the story of a woman opening a school for those with autism the day Katrina hit to raise money. Autism Speaks made it seem like they were donating to her to help her rebuild the school and others, but the woman says she never got a cent. Even more complaints arise about the amount of money paid to individuals in the organization, specifically that of Jerry Dawson. As Autism Speaks Chief Science Officer, she received $669,751 in total compensation in 2008, which did include a relocation expense amount of $269,721. Representatives of Autism Speaks claim that her compensation is in the mid-range for those in similar positions in the nonprofit health sector. I'm going to assume that this is true, or the IRS would have been knocking on their door. Allison Singer, the mom in the Autism Everyday documentary, resigns due to plans to vote against Autism Speaks' stance on vaccine research, saying that there's no reason to spend more money on researching it as the cause and the money could be better used elsewhere. She goes on to found Autism Science Foundation thereafter.
In 2010, the Autism Science Foundation signs on to an open letter to Autism Speaks, which was written by the Association for Science and Autism Treatment, to encourage them to revise their statements on their website, which at the time read, Several epidemiological studies have explored whether the MMR vaccine or thimerosal, a preservative previously used in vaccines, are linked to autism, and these studies have not supported a link. But these studies were not designed to identify effects in a small population of potentially vulnerable children due to rare genetic and or medical conditions. Despite openly disagreeing with Katie Wright about Christian possibly receiving autism from vaccines, the organization still left it open to the possibility that somehow vaccines could trigger this hypothetical group of somehow potentially vulnerable children. 2010 also shows how Autism Speaks message impacts people. A very misled Autism Speaks chapter at Ohio State makes signs with things like 80% of parents with autistic children get divorced and posts them all over campus. This is seriously damaging to anyone who is autistic, putting the blame on them for any relationship troubles their parents may have had and further demonizing autism. Now, to Autism Speaks credit, I did not find the 80% number on their facts page or any mention of autism and divorce for any year before or on 2010. However, it was a number floated as a myth for a long time and has since been debunked. The Autism Speaks chapter at Ohio State did use other statistics available on the facts page for other signs though. Note, during all this time, the leadership and board of Autism Speaks had absolutely no openly autistic members. They had some people who had children or family members with autism, but no one on the board or in leadership was openly autistic. John Elder Robison was one of the only openly autistic people to be involved in Autism Speaks, though he served on their science and treatment boards, not as a part of leadership or on the board of directors. He states that in 2011, members of Autism Speaks Science Board asked the top leaders to drop the cure language from its mission statement. The response was that the executive board is controlled by the co-founders and they're not ready to hear that. Bob and Suzanne were set in their ways and were not interested and hearing that their perfect grandchild wouldn't be cured and freed from the evils of autism. Also in 2011, Autism Speaks puts a quote from Cassiane Sibley's book in their transition toolkit out of context and with inaccurate attribution. Cassiane Sibley, now Cassiane Asamasu, is an autistic rights activist and blogger. When called out, they claim to have gotten permission from the publisher of her book, where they got the quote from, but the publisher says that they did not give permission. After that, it appeared they removed the quote, but instead white texted it. Meaning when you're reading, you won't see it, but if you were to highlight it, it would show up. More importantly, that means that the text is logged for SEO or search engine optimization, which puts a person who does not align with Autism Speaks looking like she does due to search ranking. 2012 comes along and, once again, Autism Speaks is getting criticized for its budget. It is reported that only 3% of their budget went towards families and the people who actually have autism to help and support them, while approximately 25% went to scientific research, which includes in its purpose to find a way to pre-screen for autism in the womb. This brings up an important point regarding many people's hatred toward Autism Speaks. In the search for a cure, research was actively being done to find out information about the genetic markers for autism. While it's great to learn more, the intent is what is concerning. Autism Speaks has involvement with the Autism Genome Project in which part of its mission is to be able to develop perinatal screenings for autism. This to many is a clear attempt to cause babies with the potential of being autistic to be aborted, therefore containing somewhat of a eugenics agenda. Autism Speaks then shows more failure to actually care. Simone Greggs, a mother of an autistic child, sues for disability discrimination due to Autism Speaks retracting their employment offer to her of a walk events manager because she asked if she could have some flexibility on Wednesdays due to her autistic son. After she ended up telling them never mind because her mom could watch her son, she was told she would be seen on the 14th, and then they rescinded the offer. Now, in an attempt to understand a lot of legal jargon, it looks like her suit failed in court. She started with claims that they breached an employment contract and engaged in disability and race discrimination. 
When the other side moved to dismiss, she filed an amended complaint abandoning her previous accusations and went with just saying that there was a violation of the association provision of the ADA. There's a response, she files another amendment that gets thrown out for being futile. I think what all that means is legally she didn't have a case and they threw it out. Now, 2012 is by no means the end of all of the wonderful things that go on with Autism Speaks throughout time, and 2013 will definitely prove to be a spectacular year in the history of Autism Speaks. However, you're going to have to stick around this channel to check out what happens 2013 and onward in the next part of this mini video series. I hope that so far you've been informed and enjoyed how I put this video together. I worked really hard on it and I hope that you do enjoy it and find it informative. I'm going to leave reference links in the description below. Feel free to go ahead and check those out for yourself if you don't want to wait or if you just want to be more informed. And I'd also like to just shout out, there's a particular link down there that is considered a roundup of posts that very, very greatly helped me in my research. And that's basically a compilation of different blog posts, articles, etc. to do with why people don't necessarily like Autism Speaks and things that went on with that. So again, thank you so much for putting that together. Those links are in the description below. If you are interested in Autism Speaks and organizations like them, the history about them, the kind of things that people perpetuate, you are going to want to stick around this channel because due to this one project, all sorts of things have been opened up. So again, be ready for part two. Hit that subscribe button if you're interested in anything to do with autism because that's what my channel here is about. I hope that you're having a wonderful week. Let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comments below. If you agree with how I'm going about this, etc. Just let me know. I'm super interested in what you guys think. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Bye!